there's a lot of people that are going to try to get in questions on those press conferences. So kind of look at me, and I can let you know who's made eye contact with me, and I'm going to try to be as equitable as possible. Except with Larry. I don't like Larry, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this a hot mic? Okay, folks, again, um, game day uh, format for the press conferences is we'll ask Coach Davis to make an opening statement, and then we'll open up uh, the floor to questions for the players. Uh, and then once those have concluded, we'll go back uh, to open the floor for co questions for Coach Davis. First off, I thought that, uh, that our guys came out, really competed, um, never, never backed down, never stopped playing, and that's why we were in the position we were in to be here in the first place. If you got to give our guys a lot of credit for the way they played, um, the poise we played with, but at the same time, give Michigan State a lot of credit because I thought they played, they played well. Um, Every game you go into, you say, if, you want, if you're going to get beat, you want the other team just to play better than you did. And I think that was certainly the case today. I don't think our guys or anyone in our locker room has <clears throat> excuse me, anything to hang their heads over. It's certainly very disappointing when you, when you, uh, when you don't advance. But um, again, give Michigan State a lot of credit for the way they play. Uh, we'll open the floor to questions for the players. Tom Davis, Fort Wayne News Sentinel. Zach, uh, can you walk us through what in the world happened on that technical? Uh, yeah, I'll try. Um, so I drove from the top of the key, bounced it to Nana, and I, I thought he got fouled, but I, you know, I was backpedaling. It was a physical game. I thought we maybe missed a couple calls or gotten fouled on a couple others before that. Um, but I was just backpedaling. I just, I said, uh, "What are you watching?" From about like half court, and he was still on the baseline. I didn't even think he was looking at me, but uh, apparently he heard me and he didn't like it. Uh, I shouldn't have said it, but I mean. I didn't. I didn't agree with the, with the call. At least warn me or something. You know. Nana, um, your last game with these guys uh, kind of reflect back on, on your time at Bucknell with with this special special class. <clears throat> uh, like Coach said, uh, we got nothing to hang our heads on. Uh, they're a good team. Uh, last year, West Virginia was a good team as well. You know, it's hard. It's hard to win games. Uh, only one team can win the, this whole tournament. So you know, it's hard to. You know, beat these guys, um, and you know, I, it's just been fun. It's been fun for four years. I've grown a lot as a player. Uh, these guys have grown up as well, um, not just as players, but also as individuals. Um, it's, I'm gonna miss it a lot. I'm gonna miss them. I miss the team. But uh, I, like Coach said, we got nothing to hang our heads on. Um, it was fun. Uh, it just sucks that it has to end. Mike DeFabo, CNHI. This question's for Brown. Uh, you know, every kid kind of dreams of hitting that last second buzzer beater in the NCAA tournament. Yours was a little bit different. Could you just walk me through that moment? Um, it was kind of disappointing for me because, I mean, the ones that were early on in the game didn't really fall. But, I mean, in situations like that, I mean, just try to get the ball down as uh, fast as I can and, you know, work on it a lot of times. So, I mean, just trust in the shot for it to go in. And then the last one, I mean, it was kind of a lucky shot, I guess. Um, so, yeah. Other questions for the student athletes down here, Larry? Larry Lage, Associated Press. Zach, can you talk about your first half and the rhythm you were in? And then in the second half, uh, Miles Bridges seemed to take over. Just your thoughts on his game, seeing it in person? Yeah. Um, coming in, I thought it would be an interesting matchup. I wasn't really sure because I know I was giving up some size. Uh, but I thought I could play on the perimeter pretty well. And I was able to do that in the first half, especially. Um, I mean, I was able to get threes off, get to the rim. Um, so I felt, I felt pretty comfortable. Um, and in the second half, I, I still felt good, got in some foul trouble there. Um, and then, yeah, Bridges was, he played well. He, he, he made shots. He got to the rim. He got fouled. He got putbacks. Yeah, he was, he was pretty impressive. Uh, he's definitely, I would say, their, their best player, or, or at least he was tonight. Um, yeah, he was a tough matchup for us. Any other questions for the student athletes? Yep, yeah, right back here. Uh, Zach, I'm curious if you could just kind of reflect on your four years and you know being with these guys and it coming to an end here. Yeah, sure. Um, like Nana said, you know I love these guys, um, and you know the rest of my teammates as well. 
Uh, we've kind of made a name for Bucknell in the Patriot League a little bit. We've we've competed the last two years. Obviously, we would have liked to win a game or so, um, but you know, I thought we competed really well. Um, you know, sometimes I think we got a tough draw this year for sure, <laughs> which kind of sucked. But uh, <laughs> besides that, I, I'm really proud of how we've uh, competed, and each one of us, I think, each year we've gotten better. Um, like Nana said, as basketball players, but also as people. And I think that's a that's a big uh, statement of why you come to a school like Bucknell, and then also you know how the Patriot League represents itself. So we're proud to proud to represent our school in our uh, our league. Any further questions? All right, gentlemen, you can head back to your locker room. Uh, thank you for everything. Congrats on a great season. And now we'll open the floor to questions for Coach Davis, please. Uh, Zach uh, has sco he scored 27 tonight, but I was doing the research. He's actually scored in double figures 10 consecutive games against Power Six opponents. So the national TV audience may have been surprised tonight, but you probably weren't. What makes him so effective when he's going against guys that are longer, stronger, more athletic than him? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I think one, he's he's a really confident kid. Um, this kid, he's 22. I'm not sure he's a little kid, but he's really confident. Um, he's been a score. He actually said that to me once. We were talking in the locker room or after practice about something. He goes, "I've been scoring all my life." He's like the second all-time leading scorer in the state of Maryland. So you don't do it's not by accident. Um, he's very skilled. He can shoot the threes. You saw with the range. He can put the ball on the floor and finish. He draws fouls. Maybe not on uh, Jaron Jackson Jr., but on other guys, he can post them up. I know a lot of guys post up Jackson. So he's a very versatile offensive player. Um, and he's smart, and so he doesn't force it. He kind of lets it come to him, knows how to play with the other guys, and to get himself in a position to score. I wish it was something that we could teach to everybody, um, but I think it's one of those things that's just kind of a uh, innate ability. Coach, you've been around basketball quite a long time and have had a lot of success. Can you tell me how good this Spartan team is, in your opinion? You've watched them on film, you've played against them. Just your general thoughts on them, please, sir. Well, <clears throat> Usually I enjoy watching Michigan State play, but this week it wasn't a whole lot of fun. Um, they are in the time I've been, I think I've been in Division One on some level for probably 16 years. They're as good as anyone I've seen. Um, I think that obviously when you have guys like Bridges and Jackson who are going to be lottery picks, um, I think the pieces fit well together. They have balance and that they can throw it inside. They can score from the perimeter. I mean, the first half, we were actually kind of forcing them to take the shots we wanted them to take, and they were making those too um, with Langford with those pull-ups. Um, they rebounded well, and then they're long and can defend. So, I mean, you watch them. They don't have a lot of weaknesses. They're as good as I've played against in a, in a long time. Coach, I don't know if you're a woulda, coulda, shoulda type of guy, but w would you – and I'm not trying to get you in trouble here, but would you have liked to play that game maybe with a little more flow to it with, with some less whistles and different types of things to see the outcome? Um, well, yeah, I think that everyone, you always want there to be flow to the game and um, we're at our best when there's pace and it's going up and down and the ball's moving side to side. So certainly that's better, but a lot of that's on us too. There's things that we could have done better as far as reaching in and rotations and boxing out and taking some better shots. I mean, there's, yes, yeah, so to answer your question, yes, flow's always, always better. Sorry. Uh, Larry Lee, Associated Press, your, your thoughts on Miles Bridges' film versus in person, and uh, how is he able to kind of take the game over there in the second half? He was pretty impressive in, on film. I would say the same about in person. I mean, I think the thing that you don't quite see as much on film is how high he gets when he shoots the pull-ups. I mean, I thought we were there to contest a lot, and he's just because of how athletic and big he is, he's able to get up and get a clean look anyway. Um, He's very strong. I mean, you, you can't get, you don't see as much of the strength um, when you're watching film until you see in person, but he's, he's a really, really good player. Mike DeFabo, CNHI. Uh, Coach, I'm just curious, did you get any more of an explanation from the referees about Zach Thomas's technical foul? Uh, no. Coach, Hondo Carpenter from Spartan Nation. Very quickly, when a team goes 12 or 13 deep, can that be a difference maker in the in a tournament where they can go with guys? I mean, it's hard to game plan for 13 people. Well, I think the biggest advantage it is, and, and we typically do that too, is that you have a lot of you have a lot of guys you end up having confidence in. 
and a lot of guys on the floor that the other guys are confident because they've seen them do it before. And so there's going to be nights where some guys are a little, playing a little bit better than others, and it gives you a little bit more flexibility to get through those nights. Um, and then obviously with foul trouble, I mean, games are officiated differently and fouls are called differently. And if you have more guys available, if there's fouls, it allows you to sit some guys longer, especially in the first half um, where you don't pick up a third or a cheap second one late. Um, so there's certainly major advantages to it. Uh, we'll take one final question for Coach. Larry Lay, JP, um, do you wish you could have played Michigan State on a neutral court? I'd be okay never having to play that team again. <laughs> and on that note, Coach, congrats on a great season. Thank you. We've enjoyed having you in Detroit. We'll see you guys all back here in a couple hours.